Hi everyone, in this video I want to talk about Rx Start, a very useful package for working with observables and streams of data that can change over time. And the reason I want to cover Rx Start is that it can make our life easier, especially when we use Firestore as a remote database. So not only we will talk about Rx Start, but we will also learn about data modeling in Firestore. Rx Start has a very broad API, and if I wanted to cover it extensively, I could probably create an entire course about it. Instead, in this video I will focus on one specific use case where Rx Start can save us a lot of time. By the way, this might end up being a video series on Rx Start, so if you like this content, let me know what you would like to see next in the comments. And if you are new here, please like and subscribe for more Flutter videos. By the way, in order to follow this tutorial, you need to be already familiar with Streams and Stream Builder, as well as Firestore Collections and Documents. Ok, so let's talk about Combine Latest. Combine Latest is my go-to API method when I need to combine multiple streams into one. This is a very common use case with Firestore, where we read data in real time via streams. And to connect the Firestore real-time data to the UI, we can use Stream Builder and rebuild our widgets when there is a new value. So this tutorial is divided in two parts. We will start with an example app that shows a list of items coming from a single collection in Firestore. And then we will introduce a new requirement and see how to combine data from multiple collections. And by the way, this entire tutorial is available in written format on my website so that you can follow it at your own pace. And the entire source code is also available on this page on GitHub. So in this video I'll show you the most relevant code from this sample project, but you can download this and inspect the full source code to see how everything fits together. Ok, so let's get started, and let's suppose that we want to show a list of movies. This is represented as a top level collection in Firestore where each document is a movie and it contains a title and a description and possibly some other metadata. And here I have the demo app for this project, showing all the movies that come from Firestore. To read this data we can parse all these documents into a list of movie objects and make them accessible inside a stream. And to show the data we can use a stream builder to get the stream and rebuild a list view every time the data changes. So this is how it looks like in the code. Here is our stream builder that reads the input stream from the database. And here we get the list of movies from the snapshot. And down here we use a list view and pass each movie into a movie list item widget. And this setup is quite simple because there is a one to one correspondence between each Firestore document and each movie list item on screen. However, suppose that there is a new requirement and that is that we want users to be able to save their favorite movies and different users will have different favorites. So we can't store favorite metadata for each user inside the global movies collection. Instead, we can create a users collection to identify all users that are registered in our app using Firebase user.uid as the document ID. And for each user, we can add a sub collection called user favorites, where each document contains a favorite Boolean flag. And the document ID that we use for documents in this collection will be a movie ID that we can use to reference a movie in the movies collection. So by using the same movie ID in both collections we will be able to match a user favorite document to a movie document. Next we need to see how to wire things up in our UI. So this is the movie list item widget class that we use to show each of the items in this list. And here we can add a trailing widget with an icon button and show a heart with a red color if the movie is a favorite or grey color if it's not. And for now we are not yet reading the favorite flag, so I'm going to create a temporary variable over here and set it to false for the moment. And now our widget class compiles again, so I can save and hot reload and we can see that all the items now show this heart icon on the right. And when we press this button, this toggle favorite method is called. And in turn, this updates the user favorite flag in the database using the movie ID that was passed to the constructor. So we can get back to the database console for the current user, and then we can press this button to favorite a movie. 
And as we can see, a document has now been added with a favorite value of true and using the movie ID as the document ID. Okay, so we have managed to write the user favorite data to Firestore, but writing this data is only half of the solution. We also need to be able to read the is favorite data back. And as a reminder, when we show the list of movies, we need to know which ones are favorite for the current user. This is a problem because the movies data and the favorites data live in different Firestore collections. So how can we combine this data and update our UI? Well, one way of doing this would be to add a new stream builder inside the movie list item widget so that we can read the favorite flag for each specific movie. So this new code would look like this. And as you can see, we now read the favorite data from this snapshot and the stream builder is configured with the user favorite stream of the given movie ID. And this stream will get the data from the correct location in Firestore. And just to show you that this works, I can hot reload again. And as we can see, we get a red heart for the movie that we previously set as favorite. So this solution works as long as we are happy to have a stream builder inside our movie list item widget. However, I should point out that with the current widget hierarchy, this stream builder is nested inside another stream builder. And that's because the movie list item itself is created inside this block of code and this lives inside this other stream builder that reads the list of movies. And in general, it may be a good idea to avoid nested stream builders in order to minimize widget rebuilds. So for the rest of this video, we are going to try a different approach where we will combine the data from two separate collections and produce just one output stream that has all the data our UI needs. And at the end, we will assess the pros and cons of each solution. Okay, so in order to go forward, we need to add a rex dart to our project so that we can use the combined latest API. So we need to make sure that we have the latest version of a rex dart in our pubspec.yaml file. Then we can review the Firestore database class that we use to access the required Firestore collections with some convenience methods. This class follows the same approach that I've used in my other Firebase projects. And you can check my starter architecture tutorial for more details on this. So over here, I have two methods that return a stream with a list of movies and a stream with a list of user favorite objects. And user favorite is a model class that contains the is favorite flag and a string movie ID, which is the document ID that we can use to reference the movie inside the movies collection. So our next goal is to find a way to combine movies stream and user favorite stream and generate a stream of movie user favorite which is a simple model class that holds a movie object and the favorite flag for that movie. And just to clarify what we are trying to do, here is a diagram of the entire data flow. So our goal is to combine the data from these two streams using combine latest so that we can have one output stream that we can fit into our UI. So let's see how to do this. And rather than adding this new computed stream to the Firestore database, here I have a new movies list view model class that will be used by our UI. And this already includes an empty movies user favorites stream method that returns a stream with a list of movie user favorite objects. So our challenge is to implement this method. All right, let's do it. So step one is to call rx.combineLatest2. This method takes three arguments. The first two are the input streams that we want to combine, and the third is a closure that gives us the most recent data from the two streams. And here we need to write the logic for combining this data. So inside this closure, we need to map over the list of movies. And for each movie, we want to find the corresponding user favorite object. To do that, we can write this code. And the way this works is that we try to find the first user favorite object that matches the condition inside this closure. So here we are matching the user favorites movie ID with the movie ID from this object. And we must also remember to add an on else argument, which is a closure that we can use to decide what to return if a match can't be found. So if the user has never set the favorite flag for a given movie, then we can just return null. Finally, we can return a new movie user favorite object with the given movie along with the is favorite flag. And if this value is null, we can just pass false. So let's break this down once again. 
First, we map over the list of movies and for each movie we find the user fabric object with a matching movie ID or use the or else closure to return null if we don't find a match. And then we return a movie user favorite object setting is favorite to false if we can't find a match. Before we continue, let me point out that we have written some custom logic to combine matching objects from different streams based on the movie ID. And if you use combine latest in your own apps, you will have to write different logic based on your use case. But the same principle stands because by using combine latest, we can get one output stream from two or more input streams. In fact, a rec start supports combine latest true, combine latest three and beyond so that you can combine all the way to nine input streams into one output stream. Okay, so the most difficult part is done. And now that we have this, implementing the UI becomes easy. So let me show you the updated movies list widget. At the top, I've added a provider that creates the movies list view model given the database object and in the build method, I have updated this stream builder to use the input stream from the view model. Then I extract the movies data from the snapshot and pass this to the movie list item widget. And here I can show you the final movie list item class, which is now simpler and no longer requires a stream builder because all the data we need comes from this movie user favorite object, which is passed to the constructor as an argument. And with this, we have come full circle. As you can see, I can still favorite movies and these are added automatically in Firestore. So once again, here is the complete system diagram for our simple app. And as we can see, there is a read and write loop in our data flow, which causes our UI to rebuild when the user toggles the favorite flag on a movie. So when this document is written into Firestore, the underlying user favorites collection is updated this in turn pushes a new stream value into our data flow and combine latest to combines this with the movies data to produce a new output. And finally, the stream builder gets a new snapshot and rebuilds our UI. So compared to the previous approach where we had nested stream builders, this solution has some benefits because we can easily combine data and lift some logic out of the UI layer. And this means that our widgets become simpler. On the other hand, the devil is in the details. And I'd like to point out that with this solution, we actually get more widget rebuilds than in the previous one. And the reason for that is that in order to combine these two streams of data, we need to read the entire collection of user favorites. And because this collection is updated when we write any of the documents inside it, it means that the entire list of movies is rebuilt when we favorite a single movie. Instead, our previous solution was using a stream builder for each user favorite document. So writing new data would only cause a single movie list item to be rebuilt. In summary, we can say that in this very specific case, combining these two collections is the least efficient solution and using nested stream builders minimizes widget rebuilds. In any case, the purpose of this video was to show you how to use combined letters and there are certainly cases where you can use it to get better and more performant code. So make sure to always understand the runtime behavior of your apps as you evaluate different solutions. Before we wrap up, I'd like to open the Rx Marbles website, which is an amazing resource for learning about the behavior of the various operators in Rx Dart. For example, here we can see an interactive diagram of how combined latest works. You can drag and drop the input values and see how these are reflected in the output stream. By the way, a rec start supports other combination operators such as concat, merge and zip. So make sure to check them out. But combined latest is the one that I seem to be using most of the time. Next, I want to talk about alternative ways of combining streams. In fact, nothing stops you from creating multiple stream subscriptions for your input streams and rolling out your own custom combined logic. But this requires to manually keep track of stream events and piping the output data into a stream controller or some other reactive construct. And this leads to a lot more error prone code. Instead, by using a rec start, you get the advantage of a completely functional approach and plenty of choice on stream merging operations. By the way, if you wanted, you could also implement a different kind of view model that manipulates the input streams from Firestore but does not output a stream, for example, in favor of change notifier. 
but I find that with Firestore projects, using streams all the way leads to the least amount of extra boilerplate code. So if you just need to perform stream manipulation and you don't need complex logic, combined latest might be just good enough for you. So use it wisely. In conclusion, combined latest is all about combining streams. It's a good choice if you need to combine data from different Firestore collections or documents. So in this tutorial, we have used it to combine two collections, but some use cases are simpler and you can just use it to combine one collection with one document or two documents. So here are some real world examples where you could use combined latest. You could have an e-commerce app with a product list and a shopping basket, or maybe a Twitter-like feed with a list of favorite tweets. And a simpler example would be a user profile page with some basic data from Firebase Auth, such as the display name and the photo URL, and some custom data from a Firestore document, such as the age, bio, and some other custom fields. Okay, so we've come a long way, and I'd like to wrap up by saying that your imagination is the limit, and you can make your ideas become real with the right tools. I hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial on a rec start and let me know if you'd like to see more in the comments. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.